Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the next in the uh, Admiral's Trading Spotlight webinar series. My name's Paul. Uh, we're here today to talk about trading through uncertain and volatile uh, periods, which is uh, probably quite relevant based upon what we've seen over the last couple of a uh, uh, last couple of years. But uh, with that in mind, okay, what we're here for is uh, admins, wherever you are joining us from, and I appreciate we have a very globally uh, diverse uh, uh, audience who join us. You're very, very welcome. It's great to hear. If you're watching this later on the Admiral's YouTube channel, be sure to, to basically sort of uh, ensure that you subscribe to the channel. If you found this uh, content useful, give us a thumbs up. If it's uh, not for you, that's okay. You can give us a thumbs down. We appreciate all feedback. If you've got any thoughts or even ideas for future sessions, then be sure to put them in the comments box afterwards. Well, we also have um, to, today is at the end of the session, just a reminder that uh, you'll get a, uh, a quick survey form, okay, a quick feedback form that'll be sent to straight after this. If you just take a moment quickly to, to basically basically uh, uh, just um, uh, fill that in, we'd really appreciate that here at Admirals. It always goes to help sort of making the, uh, the content that uh, we produce here as, as good as possible. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, switch over to the uh, slides and uh, talk about trading through uncertain periods. Great to see you here, Tina. So just bear with us a moment here and what, that's what we'll do. Once we're here, let me just switch off my squad box so that uh, we're not, uh, um, we're not in basically, here we go. Just when I didn't want our squat box going on completely there for as well as we're going through our session. <clears throat> squat box is a useful bit of kit for me when I am trading through uncertain times and volatile periods. So um, I appreciate that, uh, you know, as always, we have a, a wide range of experience joining us for the trading spotlight webinars. Uh, we have complete beginners at one end uh, and then advanced, you know, experienced traders at the other. Uh, and what is, uh, is, uh, is really uh, uh, useful is hopefully today will be more about trying to sort of help beginners just try to get a grasp about what goes on through uncertain time volatile periods. But hopefully also, you know, the experienced traders here in the room, you'll also be able to sort of A, take some of the value away from it and B, have something to be able to offer in terms of your own specific experiences if you have uh, had experience over the last, uh, last few years. So uh, remember, here we are, Admirals, okay, a, uh, a global Forex and CFD broker with, uh, with local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most uh, popular trading products and allowing you to engage with markets using both MT4 and MT5 uh, platforms. If you have any questions about it, Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help guide you. What we also have at the moment is uh, Admirals are riding some trade days. You might want to just look up, uh, take a look at this on the Admirals website. Uh, this is the opportunity, okay, for you to, to basically sort of get a, uh, a rebate of up to 3,000 euros. As I said, take a look on the uh, Admirals website, but uh, Admirals trade days are uh, running at the moment, and it's an opportunity for you to, to basically, uh, uh, as I said, receive up to 3,000 euros. So what am I going to talk about today? What we're going to focus on? Well, you know, Talk about what to be aware of from, from dangerous zones around the world, all right? All of those basically, they, you know, they, they sort of create uncertainty and volatility. And as it says, how uncertain times and volatile periods affect different asset, cl asset classes. You know, <clears throat> it might well be that, that you trade one particular asset class, maybe actually even just trade one particular product. I don't know, maybe you trade just Euro dollar and you might think, well, you know, what does it matter? But actually what you'll find is that, you know, we live in an interconnected world, right? And when events happen uh, around the world, they have tend to have knock-on domino effects, okay, throughout the, uh, the financial markets. So it's, you know, even if you are just trading, you know, one product, it's important for you to understand and know what it is, okay, that, you know, that's going on and how it may uh, impact you in your own particular trading. And, and to finish off, we'll talk about, you know, let's, let's talk about how can we turn it from a threat into an opportunity for us, all right? You know, uh, and we'll, we'll talk on that more when we sort of come on to it a little bit later. And if the time is there at the end, what we'll do is we'll switch across to the Admiral's platform and just take a little look at the uh, how uh, the platform is set up to be able to help you with that. 
So those who don't know me, my name's uh, Paul. I'm a uh, trader for many, many years now, okay? Uh, primarily, I like to sort of trade FX indices and commodities. They're my uh, kind of main bread and butter. Uh, when I'm trading for my position trades and my swing trades, I tend to get trend trader preferably. Uh, and then for my shorter term trading, that's where I'm a kind of a reversal and a mean reversion trader. So here we go, trading through uncertain times and volatile periods. It would be uh, interesting to hear, you know, your own thoughts on this. What do you believe actually comes about from, you know, us trading through uncertain times and volatile periods? Are there particular patterns that you may have noticed, the right, within the sort of financial markets when we actually sort of, you know, engage in trading through these uh, distinct periods? As the slide says, it's probably fair to say that the last two to three years have generated a, a great deal of uncertainty and volatility, uh, both in our personal lives, but also in our trading lives through financial markets. If you're to be a successful long-term trader, then you need to be able to navigate your way through such uncertain times and volatile periods. And today we'll explain what you need to be aware of when trading through these sort of particular times and volatility. So, I probably don't need to go into too much detail in terms of understanding that, you know, I'm sure you can all understand the last two or three years have been rather, uh, rather uncertain and volatile. And I'm sure, as I said, you'll have experienced that in your own personal life, but also in your trading lives as financial markets have reflected that. And that is, that's a key element, okay? Regardless of what might be going on in the world, financial markets will reflect that. Sometimes it will make absolute sense to you. Uh, sometimes it won't. And that's okay, all right? That's okay. You know, people think because I've traded for a long time that every time I open a chart, I should just be able to immediately understand, okay, what is going on with that market. A lot of the time I can, a lot of the time I can build a picture to understand what's going on. But equally, there's a lot of time I can look at charts, especially through uncertain times of volatile periods, where I can look at that and actually sort of just not really understand what is going on. And do you know what I do when I don't know what's going on? I do nothing. Okay, I actually do nothing because, you know, it's it's not the smartest way to, to, to operate. I like, tend to like to let a market settle down, let a market pick its direction and then look to trade with that. But I do appreciate that if you are a, a very new trader and you've only come to trading, let's even say in the last few months, you might have found that it can be rather, uh, rather volatile. OK, and, and there's a great deal of uncertainty. And we'll, we'll talk about that um, at the moment. So as I said, it would be great to hear what your own experiences have been. Maybe, as I said, maybe, you know, you've not really noticed it or understood it. Maybe you've seen lots of different patterns that kind of, you know, that you think there are uh, uh, linked to invariably to, to, you know, the kind of the, the times we find ourselves at the moment. As I said, if you've got any thoughts or comments or questions, you can put them in the chat box. If you're watching this later, okay, on uh, the YouTube channel, be sure to put it in on the comments and we'll be happy to sort of make sure that you get to get an answer there. So, as you said, we have seen plenty of volatility and uncertainty the last few years, okay, in all manner of aspects. When certain events occur, we can see they move financial markets. So it could be the threat of war, okay, just the mere threat of war, mere threat of conflict can be enough to basically spark moves in financial markets. Then there can actually be moves within financial markets when you have the outbreak of a war okay when there is an outbreak of conflict that in itself will spark moves in financial markets it's fair to say that over the last couple of years we've probably recognized okay what impact true health pandemics can have upon financial markets i'm sure that you will have all have seen that for yourself as i said these events are occurring in our personal lives but they're also reflected in the way financial markets moves there was also elements of political upheaval, just the actual overall geopolitical, geopolitical landscape, which can change very, very quickly. Although what I would suggest is that normally there are hints and rumours and suggestions long before it actually occurs of what might be coming down the, uh, the, down the path. And as you increase in terms of your knowledge and experience, you'll be able to sort of understand and plan for that better but you shouldn't really be too hard on yourself, okay, if you've not really sort of understood the implications of what might be a political upheaval or the threat of a conflict or a health pandemic. If you've not been able to sort of understand how it impacts financial markets straight away, 
don't be too hard on yourself, okay? Remember, these financial markets, are, they're huge, big, large, fluid, dynamic, okay, uh, rolling events, okay, that invariably change and adapt as the, uh, as the world changes and adapt and as new data comes towards it. So don't be too hard on yourself. We can also have things like failures of crop harvest, which people maybe don't really understand immediately, but maybe they what happens is they sort of get to experience it as, they, as in the ripples from that occur out in the sort of geopolitical space. Sometimes that happens very quickly. Sometimes it may take six to 18 months, okay, for it to actually sort of filter through towards basically to affecting the everyday man in the street. But I can assure you they do. And I can assure you that, you know, that there are ways and means to, to watch that, okay, and also, as I said, perhaps turn that into an opportunity. And I think increasingly as well, we live in times where we will see the events of cyber attacks, okay. Maybe you've experienced them. Maybe you have, you know, just caught the sort of, you know, the, the unintended consequences of it. But I believe that as, as we become a more interconnected world, as effectively, you know, we move towards things like digital currencies, as we move towards just effectively, you know, our, our lives just basically being conducted, you know, more and more across the uh, internet, not unsurprising that we will see cyber attacks, whether they be from state actors or whether they be from organizations or groups or individuals all of those things will have impacts on financial markets and so being able to recognize that being able to understand that you know that can be very beneficial to you as a uh, as a trader firstly in terms of managing risk remember what you'll hear me and you know my colleagues Marx and Jens talking about constantly is if you're not managing risk you'll eventually end up as roadkill so you know but understanding these Element, uh, events and how they impact financial markets. They can be very, very useful, firstly, to help you manage risk, and then secondly, to understand how it might sort of turn from a threat into an opportunity. What is important to recognize, okay, you know, if we take a look, if we look a little bit of, a little bit of a, a further depth, okay, a further level, is that remember that even though there is increasing use of algos within the financial markets and increasing use of you know, algorithmic uh, uh, trading, uh, trading tools okay, within financial markets, we still have to reflect or understand that uh, financial markets are still a reflection of human psychology. You know, and, and we should never lose sight of that. Okay? Even as I said, even though there's more algos maybe doing more of the execution, they are still a representation of human psychology. Therefore, okay, they still represent hope, fear, and greed. And actually understanding that both at both, you know, at an academic level, but also at, at a, you know, a personal level in terms of you know, how you see markets trade when they're filled full of hope, fear, and greed, and even seeing how you trade, okay, when you're triggered by hope, fear, and greed is unbelievably important and will help you enormously as a trader of that, I can, of that I can assure you. But with that, okay, humans hate uncertainty, all right? We hate uncertainty, all right? We would sooner take a certain negative outcome over an uncertain positive outcome. We just have a very real nature that we just humans will just grasp for certainty, and that certainty starts at you know at very very base levels. I'm sure many of you will have you know read or be aware of uh, at Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, and how you know at the very start of it, the very low of it is is a certainty. We need certainty for food, water, shelter, just even at the most basic of levels. Okay, and more, upon which we sort of you know grow as we develop and evolve, but. Equally, you know, what actually happens and what we forget, what we forget, certainly, certainly here in the West with very comfortable lives, is that actually it doesn't take that much, okay, for society, the, the veneer of society to be scratched before actually, you know, we can very quickly sort of, you know, uh, return to those kind of almost like caveman impulses. We often tell ourselves that we won't and that we're actually far too nice and far too civilized as a society. But I assure you, I assure you, okay, and as we're seeing in parts of the world at the moment, that actually can and will happen. And so it is important for us to recognize that, okay, it's important for us to realize that, okay, you know, however you wish to describe it, whether it's your inner caveman, whether it's your inner chimp, however you wish to, to, to label it or describe it, 
that still will manifest itself, okay, especially when there are uncertain times and volatile periods. And as it says there, you know, human beings, they will do anything to avoid uncertainty, even if it is a negative outcome. They would sooner have the certainty of a negative outcome rather than the possibility, but the uncertainty of a positive outcome. It's an absolutely fascinating subject to, to discuss and, you know, you'll be able to find plenty of uh, information, you know, in, in libraries and internets and stuff to, to help you with that. But many people fail to understand that actually that can have a huge impact upon trading because markets still represent hope, fear and greed. So it's not a real surprise that when we you know, experience uncertainty in life and markets, well, then we can very often see adverse reactions in markets, okay? quite extreme reactions because People are triggered. People, you know, they are effectively experiencing hope, fear, and greed. They're experiencing uncertainty. It will cause some people to act in irrational manners. And in so doing that, that basically reflects itself and manifests it in financial markets. And what will happen is that, you know, as you become more experienced, you'll be able to see and recognize that. And you would hope with a little bit of time and knowledge and education experience, you'll find it easier to almost sort of kind of distance yourself from that, to actually to be objective from that, to give yourself a, a view, a perspective that actually helps you sort of rather than treat it as a threat, start to recognize it as a particular opportunity. Because these things go on and on, you know, we, uh, you know, we like to think that because we have this fantastic technology, which we do this amazing technology around us, okay, that allows us to communicate with strangers on the other side of the world and, and order food off a, off a little handheld device, which also you can phone and video friends on, okay, because we have all this amazing technology, all right, we kind of lull ourselves into a false sense, all right, of security, that invariably, you know, that, that we are smarter than ever before. And in many ways we are, but also, you know, just have to remember, you know, human beings don't change as much as we like to think. Okay, you know, the human nature is, is, is quite innate and it's quite there. And although there's, there's, there's the shades of it, okay, and the extremes of it, okay, we don't change as much as we like to think. And, you know, as I said, it doesn't take that much to sort of trigger that inner caveman, right, and to bring it out and bring it to the fore. And, and you know, usually when that involves trading, it rarely ends well, okay, but we'll talk about that more later. So most importantly for us as traders here in an event today, how do we start to look to turn those events from threats into opportunities, all right? What is it that occurs? What is it that we're required to do? How can we help ourselves? Firstly, I would suggest, ladies and gentlemen, is that firstly, recognize, okay, it, these events occur all the time, all right? It is part of the standard cycle of life, okay? There will always be geopolitical events that change. There will always be things like, you know, crop failures. There will always be a variation or an endemic or a pandemic, okay, that we hear with in terms of health. There will be <clears throat> new things like cyber attacks, there will be natural disasters, okay, that will uh, that will occur for us all, okay. There will be conflicts, either the threat of or actual conflicts. As much as we might like to think that those things will never happen again, it, it, they they do, okay. The kind of standard cycle of life, all right. So recognize that you know there will be uncertain times and volatile periods that will occur during your trading career. It's it's just part of it's just part of life, okay. So you know you shouldn't really be getting too too um, apprehensive or too too you know too scared, okay, or too nervous, okay. Just recognize it's part of it, and with you know a bit of preparation, with a little bit of education, right, with a little bit of uh, risk management, okay. What you can start to do, as said, is to start to sort of you know almost like detach yourself, all right, from the uh, from the sort of let's say from the irrational sort of. Uh, uh, panic that would go through many traders' minds and actually start to position yourself as someone who can take advantage, okay, of such of such moves, okay, and that's what we can do. So, and this is probably worth making note, we're going to go into a bit more detail, but in the event that we see things like an uncertain time happening, you know, a particular volatile period approaching, whatever it might be, whether it be a conflict, might it be a geopolitical event, maybe it's a natural disaster, maybe it's a, maybe it's a cyber attack, maybe there is a, you know, a health pandemic, maybe there is a, you know, a crop failure. 
what are the things that we can sort of look at and expect? Well, the kind of nation that basically to experience it, more often than not, what will happen is we will see that currency deteriorate. It will sell off, all right? Why? Well, because we live in a global interconnected financial marketplace and invariably, you know, what will happen is that traders will basically want to, to, to pull their money out of that nation at the particular, the, the first opportunity they can. If there's one thing I've learned over many years, it's that, it's that capital is a coward, okay? It will run and hide in the safest place at the first sign of trouble. You're never going to change that, okay? You're never going to always maybe understand that. You may never necessarily want to, you know, uh, accept it. But you have to recognise it, okay? And you have to realise that that is the kind of the real politic of the world we live in, okay? Capital is a coward. And so if an event occurs to a nation, what you'll see is that currency will initially, it will deteriorate. It will sell off. People will not want to have their money in that nation. They will want to pull it back, okay? Especially international investors. That money that's being pulled has to go somewhere. And so very often what we see is that we get a rise in the safe haven currencies. So predominantly for ourselves, we're looking at Japanese yen and Swiss franc. But also you would probably count US dollar these days as a safe haven as well. Although that can flip either way as, we, uh, as we'll discuss later on. What we may also see is that capital flows will sort of occur towards bonds fixed income, treasuries, in particular, in particular, US treasuries. Remember, as I said a bit earlier, capital is a coward. It will run and hide, okay, in the safest place possible at the first sign of trouble. And many would still consider that the kind of safest place for money to hide is for it to hide in US government debt. Because many people would see that that is a debt that will always probably be repaid because of the strength of the US economy, which basically means the strength of the tax returns that the US government has in, strength of the ability to control and manipulate their own currency, which would allow them to effectively always sort of pay back, you know, uh, um, people purchasing bonds from them. So not unsurprisingly, money will flow in towards bonds and in particular those US treasuries. But just remember, just as a little point, if you're, you know, if you're thinking about in terms of, you know, global investors, they're still going to have to probably buy US dollar to be able to effectively buy US treasuries. There are ways and means around that, but as a general sort of rule of thumb, okay, for, for complete beginners, it's a way to consider. What you should also be aware of is that we'll probably see a nation that's having, you know, an uncertain time and a volatile period. What you like to do is you like to see the equities, okay, will likely fall if there is disruption to the stock market. And even if there isn't direct disruption to the stock market, there will, okay, there will be elements, okay, that will have an impact, which we're going to cover in the next few slides. So that will mean if the equities are going to likely to slide and fall, that will also have an impact on the index. And that actually might sort of effectively uh, uh, spread throughout the, the global indices. Increasingly, we see that you know the kind of indices are almost in a almost you know sort of you know march together in, in the same step. Predominantly, most of that sort of that tune that theme is set by those U.S. indices. But it is you know it is absolutely possible that you know a major event that happens in you know in one nation or one group can have an impact on overall okay the uh, global indices. So Darshan says, uh, look how uh, Aussie dollars risen as a commodity driven currency in two months GPRs has dropped 2000 pips. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. And that's been a, that's been a, that's been a great trade. Okay. Euro Aussie and pound Aussie have been fabulous trades. Okay. Why? Well, what we can see here is that, you know, as the next couple of bullet points, the nation's commodities may rise and, and, and the emphasis is on may. Okay. It may rise. It depends upon the nation. It depends upon the particular commodity. All right, okay, and depends upon the actual situation. But if there is going to be a supply shock, okay, in the terms of a global interconnected market, that might have an impact on the uh, on the price of particular commodities. And also, if there is like a major event going on, well, what you'll see obviously is that commodities will rise in general. Remember what I was saying earlier about human beings and their behavior, okay? There's also that kind of a rational, rational element that we want certainty, okay? And so what you'll find is that individuals, organizations, countries, they will basically try and grab what they can, okay? And if, if they feel that there's going to be problems to the global supply chain, well, invariably what they're going to be doing is buying up the commodities. So maybe it's the hard commodities like gold, 
but actually maybe it's food, maybe it's wheat, maybe it's corn, maybe it's soya beans, maybe it's pork bellies, maybe it's orange juice. They're buying those up, okay? And by doing that, you increase demand, and then invariably what we see is those commodities rise. And as Darshan was saying there, okay, you know, you can start to sort of have a, uh, a, an understanding, okay, which we'll touch on a little bit, about basically, you know, the, the sort of influence between uh, uh, commodities and also uh, FX pairs and how they're reflected, and we shall, we shall look at that in a short while. So there you go, there's some insight into, you know, into a broad sense of how you can turn threats into opportunities and understand how, how kind of the interconnected markets will play out. The question is, you know, how can we analyze and understand all of this? Well, you know, what I normally suggest is that for new traders is that, you know, you start to look at using sentiment, all right? Sentiment, which, you know, might be different from, you know, if you've just been using simple chart analysis, but actually sentiment is 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 very useful and also for a new trader quite simple to, to basically understand and that's what we'll look at now so let's have a little look at sentiment analysis and what does it imply and actually how do we utilize it ourselves <clears throat> well if you want to break it down into its you know its simplest format sentiment is just another word for confidence okay that's it really Sentiment is just another word for confidence, and it is about how traders feel about a market, a stock, a country, a government, etc. So when we look at sentiment analysis, that's what it is. It's about you know how do those traders feel about about those particular elements, uh, and I'm sure that you know over the last well, in particular this year, 2022, but also previous years, okay, the last few recent years, I'm sure when you actually reflect back on it, you will see that basically, you no, know, it's interesting to see how traders feel about whether it be market, stock, country, or government. What happens is those traders, they use that sentiment, they, they use the understanding of confidence. Are they confident in that government? Are they confident in that country? Are they confident in that stock? Are they confident in that stock market? And by doing that, that will help them define a market as either bullish, okay, or bearish. And with that, then that helps traders define their appetite to risk, okay? So... One of the things that is, you know, is, is fascinating to learn and understand is to understand your own your own attitude to risk. We here, myself and, and Jens and Marcus and the whole team at Admirals, we can teach you pretty much, you know, everything you, you know you need to know about trading. Right? One of the things we can't though teach you is is your understanding of your own appetite to risk. Okay, that is one thing that has to come from you. How does that come from you? That tends to come normally actually from managing risk, trading markets keeping great records, uh, you know, but not just the sort of Excel spreadsheet records of, you know, the sort of the, the data, but also how you felt about the trade, okay? Did you feel confident, okay? Were you feeling, you know, were you feeling aggressive, okay? Were you feeling risk averse? All of these elements are really, really key. And as you do that, and as you do that for every trade, keeping a good journal, what will happen is you'll start to see, okay, some patterns within your own, within your own way of operating. And that can help you massively because it's far better for you to work and trade in alignment with who you are rather than trying to trade in a, in a way that is just diametrically opposed to how you particularly want to operate. So sentiment analysis can be very, very helpful, very useful and quite simple for, for new traders to, to, to take on board. And what I would suggest is, you know, if you're a new trader at this stage of your trading journey, you, you know, you're just using a very basic, simple sentiment analysis of markets which you might have already heard okay traders and analysts talk about namely is the market in a risk on environment is it embracing risk or is the market in a risk off environment is it just basically wanting to wanting to ditch risk wanting to sort of run and hide okay somewhere safe and the thing is you'll find is that risk sentiment can change through things like corporate earnings macro data central bank action, political or geopolitical events, okay, natural disasters, etc. All of those things can have a huge impact. But as a starting point for traders, just being able to understand whether the markets are in a risk-on mentality or whether they're in a risk-off mentality, that in itself can just help you, okay? That can help, help you start to focus, okay, where you need to be, to understand, you know, what is the market feeling, okay, about particular events happening? Is it risk on? Okay, in which case, what we will see is you now we, as we'll discuss in the, uh, as we'll discuss in the next few slides, confidence returns to the markets. Okay, people feel bullish. Okay, they, you know, they, they, you know, they, 
they want to chase some yield, they want to chase some dividends, okay, they want to chase a return. Whereas alternatively, okay, if you know the markets are risk off, it's basically you no, know, everybody is 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 you know is wary, is apprehensive. Nobody particularly wants to put their, their money at risk in the market. Everybody wants to basically sit back on the sidelines and sort of not make a decision. You know, or basically if they're not going to make a decision. What they will do is basically funnel their, their capital towards areas where they believe it to be safe or you know, as safe as is possible when you're engaged in financial markets. So being able to understand that kind of row row, that kind of risk on risk off mentality of markets can actually be enormously helpful for you as a trader. So you will hear some trade analysts talk about row row, okay? It's just risk on, risk off. And it's all about how price changes are driven by changes in traders and investors' risk tolerance. When risk is perceived as low, then investors tend to engage with higher risk investments as they search for return. And on the flip side of that, when risk is perceived as high, then investors tend to basically seek safety in low risk investments. That would seem like common sense, wouldn't you think? But as you'll find as you trade markets, common sense always isn't, isn't always as, in the, as, as much abundance as we would like to think. Because remember what I was saying a few slides back, you know, humans want uncertainty when there's, you know, there are basically uncertain periods and volatility, you know, humans can sort of return to their irrational, volatile caveman self, okay, rather than being able to detach from it and actually see the bigger picture of what is going on. So, Roro, remember, you know, when risk is low, traders and investors are always going to be looking, they're going to be searching for, you know, return. When risk is high, what you're going to find is traders and investors are going to seek safety. Okay, maybe that's on the sidelines, maybe that's in certain products, okay, and that's what they'll be looking for. So, this can help with your sentiment analysis. This can help with trying to understand the, the overall picture. Just to be able to ask yourself that question, is the market in a risk on environment? Is it in a risk on mentality? Because in risk on situations, traders have a higher risk appetite and they will bid up the prices of assets in the market. Greed is driving the market, okay? Greed is driving that. So what we will see is we'll see risk on instruments generally rise okay as a general rule of thumb so risk on investments okay in terms of the fx markets you might see aussie kiwi dollar canadian dollar british pound sterling maybe maybe an element of a euro okay within fx markets what you'll also see is in commodities markets you might see oil copper and one or two other of those kind of hard commodities rise that's what you might see you might also actually see those American indices rise, okay, on when there's a risk on environment, people are just very, uh, you know, people are very bullish, okay, and invariably, you know, they'll be buying things like stocks and shares in normally big major American companies. All of that feeds in towards um, the, those markets rising. So that's very much, as I say, what happens when there is a risk on mentality. On the flip side of that, what we have is when the market is in a risk off environment. As its slide says, in a risk off situation, traders become more risk averse and sell assets, sending their prices lower. And that's because fear stalks the market. Remember what I said uh, a bit earlier that capital is a coward, all right? It will run and hide at the safest place at the first sign of trouble. Okay. And, you know, so long as you always. As long as you always recognize that, as long as you accept that, well, then you'll never be surprised when it happens, okay? Because when a market flashes and moves because of something, you'll know pretty much what is likely to occur. So when risk is off, what we will see is risk off instruments rise. Things like Japanese yen, Swiss franc, sometimes the US dollar. What you'll also see is things like the US 10-year treasuries, okay? Bonds in general, things like the 30 year, things like the German bond, okay, the German bond and UK gilts. What you'll also probably see is gold and silver will rise also. So, you know, you've got some commodities rising in a risk off environment, some commodities rising in a risk on environment. That's what we all generally tend to see. 
you will also maybe see a sell-off, okay, in the indexes, okay, because basically people start taking profit if there's a, if there's a risk-off uh, uh, um, mentality, they will just basically pull that back and, and pull away from that. So it's important and useful for you to understand this slide, okay, to be able to recognize, you know, when the market's risk on, when the market's risk off, because the sooner you can, uh, 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 you know, accept or recognize or analyze and identify which market environment we're in, that allows you to focus your time, energy, and resources in the most efficient time, most efficient ways possible. So what you'll find is that, you know, if you are a, uh, you know, if you're a client of Admirals, well, you can go into the sort of premium analytics there and you'll find that there's a whole host of data tools in there that can help you with your sentiment analysis. So you can actually have, as the, you know, on the top right there, okay, you can actually sort of get a couple of tools that will give you a little bit of an idea, okay, in terms of sentiment. There's actually sort of, you know, Quite a few useful tools in there. You can pick what you know, what particular asset you want to look at. So in that particular case, you know, gold. You'll be able to sort of just check what the price is. You'll see whether it's up a day, down the day. See if there's going to be news coming in that will impact it. Also, just just generally looking at the kind of the, the psychology of that particular product. All of those things will help you. What you can also do is, you know, I use a little tool myself called uh, Finviz, which takes a very quick snapshot of the FX market, and they do do other markets, okay? Just a very quick heat map, and, and it just helps me understand, okay, are we risk on or are we risk off? So, you know, when I look at this, and this is from uh, earlier today, okay? Uh, and when I look at, you know, what is again, you know, against the US dollar, the relative performance against the US dollar, okay, when I see that, uh, you know, pound yen, all right, oh, sorry, Yen in general is down, Swiss franc is down, and you know, sterling and New Zealand dollar are, are up. Well, then, you know, what does that make me think in terms of, you know, which is the market? Is it risk on or is it risk off mentality? Take a moment, have a little think about that. What do you think it is? Do you think it's risk on or do you think it's risk off? You can put it in the, in the chat box if you like, but you know, what we're generally sort of just talking about from what we've seen there is remember what I was saying. Capital is a coward. It will run and hide at the first sign of trouble. If it is hiding in yen and Swiss franc, well, then, you know, they will rise, okay? If, as we can see here, yen and Swiss franc are actually the biggest fallers, well, that is just giving you an indication that the market is in a risk-on mentality at the moment. And that's what, you know, you're particularly looking at. And very quickly, you can start to sort of, you know, adapt your plan for the day based upon, you know, understanding that kind of level of uh, sentiment analysis. So what we'll say is that, you know, if it's clear what environment you're in, okay, and, and sometimes it won't be, sometimes it won't be, okay, that's, that's, that's fine, you know, as I said right at the start, okay, sometimes you can look at the charts and it's very clear, other times it's not, and if it's not, that's okay, that, 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 that's, you know, that's not a bad reflection upon you, okay, that's just, you know, sometimes the market is just in a transition and it's changing and it's not available to be able to recognise However, if it is clear which environment we're in, then you can switch across to your Admiral's platform. You can actually set up yourself your own risk on risk off profile with, you know, with enough instruments to basically help A, give you an indication of the kind of risk on risk off mentality, uh, and also possibly look at sort of seeing how you can turn it from a, uh, from a threat into uh, a, a threat to uh, an opportunity. So, what we'll do is, you know, I said, and we'll, you know, if I said we've got time at the end, we'll quickly switch across to the Admiral's platform, look at set up a row row profile, look for correlated trade setups. Okay, remember what we just looked at a couple of sheets before. You know, when markets are risk on, okay, we would be expecting things like equities and indices to rise. Okay, you expect things like oil to rise. You'd be expecting the kind of uh, uh, beta currencies to rise. So things like. Yeah, com dolls, okay, so sort of, you know, uh, Aussie, Kiwi, Canadian dollar, sterling, right, that's what you'd be looking for in a risk on environment. That's what we particularly look at. So, as I said, very quickly, I can take a snapshot of the charts and recognise if that, if the markets are risk off, well, then I'd be expect to see gold going up, Swiss franc and Japanese yen going up, oil going down, and things like Aussie, Kiwi, and Sterling going down as well. That gives me a very quick 
insight into if that market, you know, if the markets in general are risked off in, in their kind of mentality. And not surprisingly, on the flip side, okay, you can go risk on. What we'd normally see is that gold would be sort of dropping. Swiss franc and Japanese yen, okay, would also be going down. Things like oil might be going up. Uh, and things like Aussie, Kiwi, and uh, Sterling might also be rising as well. So, you know, it's just a reflection of those, okay? And, uh, you know, and that's what you're looking for. If you can very quickly identify, you know, whether the markets are risk on or risk off, that kind of level of analysis, it will help you, okay? It will just help you make better decisions and help you drive towards better outcomes. So, you know, what we're looking to do in terms of a trading plan is you're looking to trade in the direction of the risk environment, just based on what we just looked at there. And, you know, don't, you don't need to make this harder or more complicated than, than, it, than it has to be, okay? What we're just trying to do is identify which risk mentality is, you know, is in play. Is it very clear? And then look to trade in the direction of that risk environment. If it's risk on, don't be fighting it. Equally, if it's risk off, don't be fighting it. You can utilize the daily, the four hour, the 16 and 15 minute charts to basically to build a picture. You know, it might well be that you use the daily and the four hour to identify, you know, what kind of environment it is. And then 16 to 15 minutes to, to actually pinpoint your uh, entries. Nothing wrong with that at all. Always look for some correlations if they're there and very clear. You know, and you can utilize existing setups. OK, you don't you don't need new fancy setups for, you know, trading within a, in a let's say, a row row environment. Things like price action, things like candlesticks, things like how price reacts around the 50 period moving average, they can all be sort of, you know, very much, you know, they are all still enormously valid. It's just about understanding the kind of the, the environment that you're finding them in. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we have experienced a lot of uncertainty in the last few years, I'm sure you'd agree. And that is showing up in the financial markets. What you just have to do is put it into perspective, periods of volatility and uncertainty, they're not new, they're always occurring. And they will have an impact on FX, equities, commodities, and fixed income markets. You can keep on top of events by studying sentiment analysis and just basically keeping it very clear, very simple about how to operate in a risk on risk off environment. And so you can do create a row row profile to help you trade and focus on the correct products. So as I said, we've got a couple of minutes left, so I'll just quickly switch across to the uh, to the charts to show. If you've got questions here for us, you can always you know contact us on Admirals. Okay, you can see the email address there is global at admiralmarkets.com, which you're very welcome to, uh, to to sort of send. And as always, you know you'll be able to find other content on the YouTube channel and the Facebook uh, page as well. So um, I hope that's found that's useful. That's giving me a bit of food for thought in terms of how you could operate, okay, in, in uncertain times, volatile periods. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just bear with me. I'll switch across to the uh, Admiral's platform and we'll just have a quick look at there in the last minute or two. So just, uh, just bear with us. Okay, super. So I'm hoping that you can still sort of hear me and see me, etc. Uh, you know that, and I've got to just the the uh, platform up, and you know, and as I have here, I have you know, this is just a row row profile, okay, which you can uh, which you can quite easily uh, set up and stuff. You know, um, uh, Darshan says great session as always. Thank you. You're, you're very welcome, Darshan. It's all really great. Uh, and what I've got here is a row row profile, okay, and, and what I've got is just you know an opportunity to 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 give myself an idea, all right, of understanding you know what's going on. So here in the bottom right, you know, what I've got is effectively, bang, a dollar profile chart uh, opposed to a US uh, Treasury's note chart, okay? So it's usual, not unusual for them to be inverse, inversely correlated, giving me just an idea of where the kind of, you know, the, the, um, the not only the strength and weaknesses, but also, you know, what is, is the view in terms of risk on and risk off. Uh, uh, here I have, you know, I have, uh, Bitcoin there, okay, and you know what I'm looking for is you know to see how does people develop in terms of utilizing Bitcoin as a uh, as a risk alternative. And my suggestion so far would be that it's you know it has not performed as people would have hoped, but that may well change. Um, and then you'll know, have things like you know the uh, kind of the Aussie dollar, which is very good at reflecting on the uh, uh, commodities boom. 
Uh, and then what we'll also have is you know dollar against Swiss franc here and dollar against Japanese yen. So you know what you can hopefully see is that you know the the the, the price against both the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen accelerated uh, there. It's take a little bit of a breather, but accelerated there. That's just given as an indication that you know there is a risk on uh, risk on mentality because clearly Swiss franc and Japanese yen are being sold uh, off. Uh, oil is in a, uh, a particular downtrend at the moment, but it's still above uh, one hundred dollars, and we'll just wait to see how that plays out. And, you know, and gold is gold is very scrappy there at the moment. Gold is not really sort of kind of uh, you know getting anything to get really excited about after its move. It's now just got to work out and decide what it's going to do, what its next uh, what its next move will be. You can also add in, you know, extra uh, extra charts. So we talked a little bit earlier about, you know, uh, sort of euro against Aussie, pan against Aussie, because effectively they are linked to events going on in the world right moment in terms of the Aussie reflected commodities, sterling and euro reflecting kind of risk appetite, namely the, the, the lack of it in that sense. And that's well worth having a, a quick look at. So uh, Darshan says, uh, why do not remain is understand is why GBP USD remains so battered. Um, it, it's not really necessarily anything to do with the uh, um, Brexit, Darshan. It is just a, a reflection that, you know, there is a there is a risk element because of events that are occurring in Eastern Europe. There is a there is a kind of, let's say, a, a backlash against that in terms of in the same way we get for both the sterling and for uh, for the euro. So, you know, there is a, a, an effect on that, OK, both it. Um, also, a, a, you know, a, a case of uh, just, uh, you know, it's a picture in terms of a whole global scenario, okay, so particularly nobody's looking particularly brilliant at the moment, okay, this year, based upon what we've gone, what's gone on, what's occurred. Also, the fact that, um, you know, there's not been as, uh, as much um, uh, consensus in terms of raising interest rates in the UK, okay, the, the last uh, the last Bank of England meeting, okay, there was, uh, I think it's Cunliffe who basically voted against it, okay. So there isn't the, there isn't a complete sort of a, a joined up, okay, thinking from the Bank of England in terms of interest rates. So basically that makes people a little bit, um, a little bit wary of sterling at the, uh, at the moment. Hope that, uh, hope that, uh, um, hope that helps. Um, so, Thing. So um, there we go, ladies. You know, sadly we've uh, run out of time as uh, as always, but uh, I uh, I hope you have found that uh, a useful session. I'm just giving you a bit of food for thought. Okay, I appreciate that maybe it's not always as exciting as looking at a, at a you know a, a candlestick pattern, but this is the kind of work you have to do beforehand. All right, so that you can actually choose the right candlestick pattern to, to utilize. If you understand the market environment, if you understand what the market participants are going through, that puts you in a good place to be able to sort of pick better trades. And as I say, turn volatile periods and uncertain times from a threat into an opportunity. As always, it just uh, uh, you know leads for me to sort of just to wish you all the very best of success in your own trading endeavors. I hope you have a great trading week, and I'll speak to you soon. Many thanks, everybody. Cheers.